Windhelm is the capital of the East March, which, alongside the Rift, the Pale and Winterhold, forms part of what Nords call the Old Holds. This just means that they are the oldest and the first ones to be conquered by men. Much like our Whiterun video, we will focus on the capital itself for now, but like I said before, this hold is one of the oldest ones. In fact, it is said that it is actually the oldest, built by Isgramor to honor his son. You see, when Isgramor set sail with his 500 companions to reclaim Skyrim from the elves, his son Ingol was separated from the fleet in this massive storm and ended up shipwrecked alongside the coast. He and his crew were killed by sea ghosts. In his grief, Isgramor decided to build a city in his honor close to the sea. He made the castle feel like a true testament to the might of humans, so he built it mighty and tall. The city itself was built by elvish slaves to further salt the wound. It is said that the city was built in Atmoran fashion, which you can easily tell inside the actual keep, but the design of it was very interesting. You see, Isramor wanted a very long bridge to be made by the entrance of the city so that no elf could ever sneak in into the city to exact revenge for the mistreatment of the elves. As the bridge was built long, so was the keep built high to show dominion over the skies much like over the elves. Guys, this is all pre-First Empire, like this is old school as far as history goes. This city is just that old. Since then, it has been destroyed twice, once in the First Era during the War of Succession. During this era, Windhelm was the actual capital of the Empire, but there were political issues regarding who was going to be High King, and this resulted in rebellions which ended up destroying the city. The second time was in the Second Era, when the Akaviri invaded Tamriel and attacked the city, pretty much destroying it all except for the actual keep. Which is the reason why if you want to see some Admoran fashion, you can only see it on the keep and not everywhere else in the city since everything else was destroyed and rebuilt. As far as history goes, there really isn't anything else important until the Civil War, which is where Skyrim hits up. I don't want to get deep into the civil war in this video, however, since for now I just want to use my time to talk about the actual city instead. All you need to know is that the Jarl of Windhelm is the leader of the rebellion against the Empire, which makes Windhelm the capital of the Stormcloaks and the possible capital of Skyrim, if you side with them and win the war, but I'm sure you guys already know that. There is something weird about this city, a certain kind of darkness to it that makes it incredibly interesting. The coldness can be felt, the ice-filled streets and the dark, tall walls give it a, a very strong claustrophobic feel which at the same time makes you feel protected. This is the only city in Skyrim where I can actually feel lost as I wander through the alleys, which gives it a very real feeling which other cities just don't have. The city is divided into three main quarters, the Stone Quarter, the Grey Quarter and Balonstrad, which means Avenue of Balor in Ancient Nordic. The Stone Quarter is the main district and it's the first thing you see once you enter the city. It contains the marketplace and most shops, including the inn. The Grey Quarter is where all the Dark Elves reside. Named obviously because of the color of their skin, it was once called the Snow Quarter but was changed when the Nords decided to segregate all the Domners in that enclosed area. The Dark Elves. Kind of like the Elf Alienage from Dragon Age. Yes, it is uh, extremely racist and the Dark Elves completely resent them for this. The Nords see them all as outsiders and it is even popular knowledge that they get taxed higher than Nords in the city. Balonstrad is the oldest section of the city and also has the largest buildings in it. The Palace of Kings and the Purchasable Home form part of this area. There is a smaller enclosure actually uh, for the Argonians called the Argonian Assemblage, which is kind of like the Great Quarter. It is much smaller however and non-Argonians usually aren't allowed to enter and only Argonians are allowed to live there. Yo dude, I gotta make a recording. You must leave immediately. You're not supposed to be in here. Dude, I know. I'll just take a minute though. Last warning. Leave. Now. Dude, it's an important video. I. You're not supposed to be in. Come on, dude. All right, look, you little shit. I'm tired of your bullshit. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. All right, you can just go ahead and smoke your skumar or something because I don't give a shit what you have to say about it. 
every person in the assemblage offers quests, which is pretty cool, except the trans, uh, but screw him. The Argonians in here all work at the dock, and interestingly enough, shipment cargo usually goes missing. It is whispered around town that the Argonians usually steal this cargo as recompense for the mistreatment they receive from the Nords. By the way, you can actually marry Argonians, and two out of the three marriageable ones live here, so <laughs> go nuts! Before we start visiting any specific place, however, let's talk about the biggest building on the block, the Palace of Kings. I actually scratched that. There really isn't anything interesting about this place, at least nothing I haven't covered before. It was built by Isgrimor and it serves as the castle and the home of his dynasty. You can see the ancient Nord architecture that resembles a lot of the Nordic ruins you can find through the game. An interesting thing, however, is that Ulfric Stormcloak will ignore the fact that your character is an elf, and will not only trust you, even though he generally distrusts other elf characters in the game, but he will even allow you to live outside of the Grey Quarters and even become a Thane. His second in command, however, Galmar Stonefist, will make sure to let you know he distrusts you. The Jarl replacement that takes place, however, if you choose to side with the Empire and finish the questline, is Brunewolf Freewinter. Now, he's just a Nord that lives in the east side of Windhelm, with almost no indications of being in any political position yet, he becomes the Jarl. What's interesting about him though is that he shares the complete opposite feelings towards Argonians and Elves than the Jarl does. When he's made Jarl, he makes promises about helping the Argonians assimilate into the city and working with the Elves in the Great Quarter to renovate the area. I guess they think I can open Ulfric's eyes to their plight. Get him to lift a finger on their behalf. I'm trying, but Ulfric is set in his ways. No changes actually happen within the game, however. What's funny, though, is that if you're playing a Khajiit or an Argonian and you talk to him before him becoming the Jarl, he will call you by your derogative name, calling you a cat if you're a Khajiit, or calling you a lizard if you're an Argonian. What do you want, lizard? <laughs> Two-faced prick. He also turns to be the only Jarl without a house girl. And what's even more interesting is that there is a character in one of the Skyrim books called Skarden Freewinter in the book A Dream of Sovngarde. It could possibly be a relative of his, but he never says anything about it. Now, there is a very interesting museum in Windhelm called the Calixtus House of Curiosities. The owner, Calixto, was inherited a large sum of money from his parents after they died. So he and his sister traveled the world in search of adventures, and found many rare and interesting relics along the way. After his sister died, he opened up the shop to show off everything he collected. There are some really interesting items in here, like for example the Book of Fate, which is said to hold the tale of the fate of whoever is reading it. When the Dragonborn reads it, however, the pages are blank suggesting that the Dragonborn has no clear fate and that he can choose what his end will be. He could also suggest that he's simply bound to die soon so there's no more story to tell, or maybe it's just that the book is fake. There's also the Dancer's Flute, which is a, a flute that is said to be able to make anyone magically dance. Huh. And then lastly, there is Isgramor's Soup Spoon, which is uh, which actually in-game is a fork. <laughs> The color of the spoon suggests that it may have been a gift from the dwarves to Isgramor, although it is very highly unlikely, but you can see that there are some dwarven plates and cups on top of it corroborating the unlikely scenario. Now, Calixto is a suspect in a high-profile murder spree investigation going on through Windhelm when you first arrive. His innocence is not really important. What's interesting, however, is that this murder is specifically targeting women and killing them. Now, one of the women killed is Frigga Shattershield. Now, this woman can't possibly be saved, since she will die since even before you first arrive in Windhelm. What's curious, however, is that there are some really serious dialogue options with her twin sister and her mother, some of them letting us know that the death of her has been really hard on the both of them, her mother even resorting to drinking heavily. Now, this is very dark, but very interesting nonetheless. Her twin sister, that is still alive, can actually be killed in an optional objective in a Dark Brotherhood quest. Now, if you do that, eventually the mother kills herself, now because of having both her daughters murdered. You discover this by entering her house after the death of her second twin. 
The end of the questline to find out the culprit of this series of murders, however, will lead you to Hiram, which is arguably the best perishable house in Skyrim. It's big, holds a bunch of mannequins, and possesses a lot of displays for you to show off your gear. It's pretty sweet. Before I let you guys go, however, there's some really interesting stuff that I want to talk about. The lock at the Argonian Assemblage is a very good spot to train your lock picking. I believe the difficulty scales with your level, but usually it is the master lock, and it resets often, so train there. Scouts Many Marshes, and <laughs> yeah, that is his actual name. He strangely considers Ulfric Stormcloak to be his friend, which is extremely odd for an Argonian living in the Assemblage. He also actually was supposed to have some dialogues with Amaris in the New Guinness Corner Club as part of his daily routine, but uh, they were removed at the last moment for some reason. His dialogue can still be read and it shows his empathy for the Nords, as well as it reveals the fact that he gets paid 8 septums a day for his dock work. Really? 8 septums? Jesus. By the way, you can marry this guy. If you find Rolf, Stonefist, anywhere in the city, challenge him to a brawl, because if you win, you will make all the low-level items in the Candle Hearth Hall freely available. We all know this guy, and Grenor wants to honor. He's a beggar that asks you for money all the time. Funny though, you can actually marry him, no idea why uh, you would do that, but that's an option, I guess. The thing is, even if you marry him, and even if he lives at your home, he will still ask you for money. Gosh. Anyways guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you haven't done it already, check out my Let's Play channel. We're playing Oblivion, Skyrim, soon Fallout, and a bunch of other games. Hope to see you all there. Peace, guys. Holy shit, dude, I'm so high right now.